Okay, so some next level type of free response questions. So here we're given a graph and in the title it says potential energy, which down below they'll tell us that's on the y axis. And so we've got potential energy over here. And then the radius is actually going to be in terms of where does it say the horizontal is in terms of earth radii. And so I'm going to write it as earth radii. And so it tells us that we're launching a small object at a speed of VO from the surface of the earth. And the total mechanical energy of the system, earth and whatever's being launched, the earth is assumed to be at rest, uh, is negative one. And so if you notice there's a dashed line, that's your negative one joules. And so that's gonna be our total mechanical energy. Okay, so with all that, What's the maximum distance that this object can get to from the center of Earth? And so it starts, they said, at the surface. And so notice if the x-axis is in terms of Earth radii, where's the surface at? Zero. Not zero, one Earth radii. When you're on the surface, oh, yeah. there it is. And so one Earth radii is gonna be our surface mark. So this is gonna be, okay, the initial location. Now we know there's initial velocity. This isn't a total energy graph, it's just a potential energy graph. And so at the surface, it has a potential energy and hopefully you remember the negative. Remember as an object goes up, 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 up now, it's approaching zero, so it's increasing to zero. So this is a scalar magnitude type of graph. It doesn't mean down, it doesn't mean left, right? Okay, and so what is the maximum distance it can get to? Well, we know as it goes up, 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 kinetic energy is decreasing to what? Zero, zero. so at far away, not necessarily infinity. We haven't talked about infinity yet. But far away at this max distance, we know that kinetic energy is gonna equal zero. And so that means that total mechanical energy, which they said is equal to one, is just gonna be equal to that gravitational potential energy final. Yes? And so really to answer this question, no calculation needed, read the graph. When does the potential energy, oh, I guess big G. So when does our total mechanical energy, negative one, equal gravitational potential energy of negative one? A little over four, yeah. So this one's not so fine tuned. Do you call it 4.25? So I think the key just says four, but to me that's pushing it. And so I would probably answer this one at an R equal to uh, 4.25 earth radii, or you can say uh, just above four, four earth radii, okay? AP exam, usually the graphs when they want you to read it or use it for accuracy, they'll give micro grid lines, right? Okay. Everybody good on that one? Well, how much kinetic energy does the object have when it's launched? So go back to the surface. This is your launch point. So what do we know? Total mechanical energy is the sum of, oh, big G, plus the kinetic energy. Total was given, they said it's negative one. At the surface, how much potential energy do we have? Negative four. And so how much initial kinetic energy do we have here? Three joules, that's all they want. Okay, uh, yeah, well, all prob some problems will. Now, 
Let's escape the Earth's gravitational field and never to return. So how much kinetic energy would the object have to have at launch in order to escape Earth's gravitational field? So if you think back to last class, what do we know about this escape scenario? Well, this escape scenario, if we write out our conservation of energy statement, the initial gravitation and the initial kinetic, and by the way, this is where we find the escape, is equal to final gravitational and final kinetic. Well, to escape, you go where? Where in space? There's not a number, but there's a symbol. There's a concept that we use. At infinity, okay, how much potential energy does the object have? Remember, we increase to a max. And what number is our max in quadrant four? Basically zero. And then for that minimum escape speed, it's going to go up, 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 up. And at infinity, it'll come to a split second stop, but never to return. It doesn't fall back down. It just sits there, right? If we launch it any greater, it's a waste of fuel for us, but it would then just keep going at whatever final speed it would have. But this minimum escape, it would reach a final velocity of zero. And so how to figure out kinetic energy without a given speed, without a given kinetic graph, it's the idea that your initial kinetic basically has to equal the magnitude of the initial potential energy, which is what? Uh, no, that's the total. Negative four, we read on the graph, it was negative four. And so our initial escape kinetic energy has to be a positive four in order to conserve and equal zero, zero. Bless you. Okay, next question. Last one on this page. In terms of VO, so this is gonna be a variable solve. Do we know VO? No. All we know is the initial setting. They said with the uh, total mechanical energy of negative one, you would have VO. How fast would the object need to be launched from the Earth's surface never to return? In other words, what is that escape velocity? Okay, but not a number, it's gonna be in terms of VO. And so if we think about, well, we know the escape kinetic energy is four joules. We can equate that to MV escape velocity squared right? We're solving for that escape velocity, but it doesn't say in terms of mass, in terms of kinetic energy, it says in terms of VO. Do we know the mass? Did they give us anything about the mass? And it's not an accepted variable. So y'all, if you have two unknowns, you need two equations. Where else might, why, mm, where else might we find mass? or the initial kinetic, right? We know it's because it says in terms of VO. If I go to potential energy, then it's in terms of mass and distances, and that's not allowed. And so let's go back to that initial uh, in prior first scenario kinetic energy. It would equal one half mass times that initial velocity squared. And there's the initial velocity that we want. Well, how much initial kinetic energy did we have under the first scenario? Up above, we said it was three joules, right? In part two, the initial, initial part. Okay, when we were just launching to launch, not escape. And then there's that VO. Well, I wanna keep the VO in my answer, but what's true about the mass before and the mass now? They're equal. So let's do a double solve. Let's solve this first equation. 
So multiply both sides by two. Three times two is six. And then divide both sides by VO squared. And we can plug that in to the mass of our new scenario. And so we get four equals one half, oops, not one third, times six over VO squared times V escape squared. And so half of six is three over VO squared. Oops. We're trying to isolate the escape speed. So I got to multiply both sides by VO squared, divide both sides by three. And so it'd be four VO squared over three equals V escape squared. Final step, square root both sides. Now you can leave it that way. We can say that escape speed equals the square root of four VO squared, or you can pull those out, but you gotta keep the square root of three in the bottom. And I've heard some math teachers don't like that, but for physics, it's okay, okay? So just so you know, at least in simplest terms, you got to get here. Good deal? Questions on this page? All right, page seven. Let's orbit the Earth. We got a satellite. Now, my warning on this one, be careful of the letters, okay? So I'm gonna read this a little slower, differently. I'm not gonna read it too fast. Have we learned that that's a good strategy in physics? <laughs> read it slow enough for you to parse through, dissect what's being told, maybe read it a second time. If you read too quick, you might miss a key word, right? Okay, note to self on AP exam 20 days from now. A satellite of mass M, that's not meters, that's a variable for the mass. It's in an elliptical orbit around the earth, which is assumed to be at rest, which has a mass, ME, and a radius, RE. The orbit varies from closest approach of A, and notice that is a distance identified in the picture, okay? At point A, so point A is a location, little a is a distance. To a maximum distance of little b, that's a distance from the center of the earth at point big P. And so that's on the other side of the ellipse. At point P, here's a given, the speed of the satellite is VO. Now we don't know if it's going clockwise, counterclockwise. So we're just gonna pick one. What do y'all want today? Is, it, is that tangent velocity at point capital B gonna be up or down? Doesn't matter, down. So we'll say VO is down right there, okay? All right, express your answers in terms of, this is a variable solve. Y'all on the AP exam, they can ask variable solves in multiple choice, okay? Where you gotta pick the right answer, but chances are two or three times at least in the free response, you're gonna be dealing with variable solves, okay? Maybe one of them then takes you to numbers, whichever, okay? We gotta be comfortable with variable solves. So what determine the total mechanical energy of the satellite Earth system? Go with given. We were given information at point B. So I'm gonna look at point B. So total mechanical energy equals the gravitational, got big G, plus the kinetic energy at that point. And so the gravitational potential energy would be a negative, don't forget it, far away distances, we can't use MGH. So that negative big G, what are the two masses? Well, they said little m and big M E. By the way, when doing these, if you start with your own subscripts, M1, M2, if that's your habit, like it is mine, 
Then at the end, before you circle that final answer, put it in the terms they said, okay? They are looking for only the allowed variables in your final answer. Uh, it's our new potential energy equation. Remember, it's a quadrant four quantity. We're increasing to zero, that negative work done by gravity. Okay. And then we got to finish it over. Now, what R? R is not really allowed, not even R E. What's the distance to point B? Little b. So you want to be careful here. And then plus one half, which mass is moving the satellite, so little m. And then the velocity at point B was given, that's VO squared. And nothing simplifies. We can't combine like terms. Uh, the last check, I would say, just make sure that my variables in my answer agree with the ones in the list. So big G, good. Little m, good. Capital M, E, good. Little b is a distance, good. Uh, you don't want to put a capital B there, right? That's a location, not a distance. And then little m, okay, V, O, okay. So final answer, that's it. That, no, the M's don't cancel because we're solving for energy. M's only cancel if like we were moving it to the other side. And so it has to stay here. Question B, what is the magnitude, which just means what? Size, and even though we're not dealing with numbers here, I don't need to worry about negative or positive in terms of direction. But remember that negative and potential energy is not direction. So what is the angular momentum of the satellite about the center of the earth? In other words, the center of the earth is gonna be that fulcrum, the axis of rotation, okay? Well, again, go with B. That's what we know, point B, because that's what we know most information about. And so angular momentum of a point mass is what? MVR, so the mass of the satellite, little m, the VO at point B, and then what is our perp? A little b distance, and that's it. <laughs> it's setting us up for the next part, okay? And then what about the velocity when it reaches point A? Well, part of Kepler's second, second law here is that conservation of angular momentum as it orbits around the earth. And so LB equals LA. And so that MVO little b equals same mass. I'm going to call VA. That's what we're going to be solving for. And then what's the lever arm, if you will, at point A? Little a. Well, what do you notice happens? M cancels and to isolate VA, it would be VO little b over little a. So it's that initial velocity times the ratio, big distance to little distance, right? Bless you, bless you. And it's in terms, again, always check your answers to that final listing. Are they all accepted? By the way, that, that's a pretty long list. AP, it's usually in terms of, you know, three or four plus constants, okay? They may not list big G or little g or pi, but it may say inappropriate constants. That's AP verbiage. But that's our answer for this one. Everybody good? All right. Next up. Well, as the satellite passes point A and is traveling upward, so that actually agrees with our original direction, and A, we now know something about, so I'm going to call it VA, it's upwards, a rocket engine on the satellite is fired so that the orbit is changed to a circular orbit of radius. So this isn't a constant velocity yet. 
after it, the firing gets the circular achievement, if you will, goal, then it may orbit in a constant velocity, okay? About the center of the earth. And so does the satellite slow down or speed up to make this happen? You can kind of think about driving. What do you have to do if you're, uh, let me draw the former ellipse here, right? What do you have to do if the road gets closer or, or makes a sharper turn? That's what I think about. You better slow down, okay? If you go fast around a curve, you better hope it has a large radius. But if it's a tight turn, like a circle is compared to an ellipse, you better slow down, okay? Okay. And the little explanation here, it's not constant again, but I think about that V equals whatever arc length divided by period type. Time is gonna go on no matter if you're an ellipse or a circle. So it's that V is proportional to R. And so for the circle, R needs to decrease. So your velocity better decrease to make the circle, okay? Not with this equation, so. Okay, so to achieve this slowdown, what direction does the rocket need to fire? And this one, don't think too quick. Get in depth. So you wanna slow down. So if my car, again, take it to the car. If I'm going forward, now we push on brakes, but imagine we had like a fire extinguisher, if you will. So I'm going in the car or skateboard, whatever, at a good speed, I wanna slow down. What direction do I want to fire the fire extinguisher? If I fire it back, what's that going to do? It's going to speed me up. I need to fire it the direction I'm going because as, think Newton's third law, as the extinguisher pushes the gas forward, it pushes back on me, right? Same thing here. And so what direction does the rocket need to fire? Well, if it fires backward or down at this point, it's gonna speed it up. And so using Newton's third law, the force on, remember prepositions are important, on the satellite needs to be down. And so the force of the rocket needs to be what? Fired up at A. Does that make sense? And then last question here, determine the speed of the satellite now that it's in the circular orbit. So it fires enough, long enough to achieve this constant radius. Now we go back, I don't, it's a few pages back, but we derived this one from net force equals gravitational force. And so that orbital speed is equal to the square root, big G, constant, big M, it's Earth, divided by R. Now that's not my final answer. We're still in variable terms. G is okay, capital M-E is okay, but really the R should read what? At little a. And that would be my final answer. All right, questions on this one or any of the concepts. That's the end of like our notes and class practice. So I'm gonna let y'all do some of the NIMSY. I think y'all have already done multiple choice. Okay, so just as a preview, if you need to look over the cliff note versions here, you can. 10 and 11, it's not a full four because so back in the day, this one was tied to something called electrostatics because the formulas look very much the same but we don't study electrostatics anymore. So if you're wondering, where's F1, where's F2, where's the other multiple choice? They were electrostatic questions, okay? And so you have F3, which focuses on equations and relationships, and it's actually a continuation on page 11. My hope is page 10 feels familiar. Page 11 is your extension. Notice the path here. Okay, so they're going to talk about a gas cloud orbiting around a star. 
And so be careful because if you think too quick, you're like, oh, the sun, the planet, wait, where'd half the planet go? No, it's a gas cloud, okay? It's got a spiral. So see if you can take it to a spiral, what's happening for it to spiral in, okay? And so give these a try. I'm gonna go do a little grading if you want. I assume y'all want me to get the test graded, right? Okay. So try these, the keys on Canvas, work together, small group. Um, if you wanna come up to me, you can still ask the questions, um, but 